Thank you. Uh, we're not going to have Mr. Apperson make any, any statements. I can tell you that his mother and his wife are here with him. Uh, they might have a word or two to say that uh, law enforcement has been extremely professional. We have, uh, I've spent a good deal of time talking to them. Uh, you will find out during the course of this that um, Mr. Epperson is, made an initial statement when the 911 call went in, and he made an initial statement to law enforcement when um, he was first approached. And in those statements, uh, which will come out at another time, uh, he simply maintained that he acted in self-defense. And with that, uh, we're simply going to leave it at that point. We see everything to suggest that is correct and nothing to suggest otherwise, but we do not think it's appropriate to get into any of the facts specifically right now as law enforcement needs to conduct this investigation. We do not want to get in their way. We do not want to obstruct them in any way. We feel like the more that they have free reign to conduct their investigation, uh, the better it is for Mr. Apperson. So with that, uh, I think his, his mother and his wife might have the briefest of statements, and then they're going to go and uh, step up, you're welcome to, and talk as a, uh, spend some time as a family. Um, I just trust that the justice system is going to work. Ma'am, can uh, you please step up to the podium? Thank you so much. I hope, I, I have faith that the justice system is going to work in this case. Matt is a good man, and I'm sorry this is happening to him. And, and you state your full, if you give them your full name. Please. Janet White. And go ahead. Hi, I'm Lisa Aberson. I've been married to my husband for 11 years. I've known him since I was 15 years old, and I know that the truth will prevail. That's all. Thank you. Now, if you'll let them, I'll, I'll, I'll have a few more words to say to you all, and they're going to go take off as a family we'll talk later on. Please? What's that? I didn't get a sign. I didn't see him. We didn't see him. We, you didn't what? All right. So, um, Mark, can you do their first and last names again of Janet? Yeah. We've got, let, let me get them to get it correctly. Hold on. Let everybody, let everybody up for the yeah. mic, okay? Yeah, everybody's okay. been yeah, just knocking their cameras yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I make sure. Everybody thumbs up when you have your plug back in. Hold on. There's one more coming. Anybody need white? Make sure I don't have the phone number on the back of it. <laughs> that would be good. Lisa. 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 L-I-G-A? L-I-S-A? Yes. Lisa? I think L-I-S-A. L-I-S-A? Lisa? Mom's name is Janet White. White? Okay. Everybody good? Everybody good? This is going to be real limited. I'm really just trying to let you all go back with something so your news directors don't have their elbow on your throat. I one thing that's interesting here well that would be a matter of public record and I think there were reports made previously back in September of last year that's a matter of record that uh, what was reported then and I think that will be factored into the investigation but that's up to law enforcement to conduct is this an ongoing feud between these two guys and do we know what it's 
stems from? Well, I can tell you it's not been an ongoing feud on behalf of Mr. App Apperson. I can't get into the mind of anybody else. But by all indications, Mr. Apperson has uh, not had any type of uh, ongoing issue from his perspective. Did Mr. Apperson win the case that George Zimmerman waved a gun at him, or was it only verbal? I won't get into any of the specifics other than what he has already told law enforcement, which is going to be a matter and is a matter of public, and that is that he was acting in self-defense. To get into the details would, I think, be really inappropriate at this time. You want to let, let law enforcement conduct their investigation unobstructed, and also we don't want to be making any statements that somebody else could find out about and then start maybe turning them or moving them to their, to, to their benefit. If so, your client acted in self-defense, are you saying George Zimmerman was the aggressor here? I'm saying that he acted uh, under self-defense, and so the facts that led up to that is going to be part of the investigation. Will I know everybody would want a little bit more on that, but it would be foolish of me to get into any of the facts and to let him talk about it. He already made initial statements to law enforcement. Um, I, what we did is when we got word that uh, he, was in, at, in police, um, he was at the police department here, we sent out word that we immediately invoked his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Law enforcement acted completely professionally. They honored it as they were duty bound to do, but they acted professionally. They recognized it and they went ahead and uh, ceased all questioning. Um, he did make two statements, uh, supposedly, one to, on the 911 call, which will be a matter of, I don't know if it's been disseminated yet, but you, that's a matter of public record, which you'll get. And the second is when, in fact, he was first contacted by law enforcement. And um, all indications, the statements were consistent, each with the other, and they all said that in fact, he was acting in self-defense. The manner and mode of which he acted in self-defense, I'm not going to get into at this time. Uh, there may be a time down the road, but again, I think that it's in the best interest of justice and of my client to allow law enforcement to conduct their investigation. And as the family has said, I think quite appropriately, the truth will prevail, and, and we feel rather confident, so extremely confident actually, um, that all this will show um, that this was an act of self-defense. I'd say it's fair to say that if he acted in self-defense, that in his mind, he felt threatened. I mean, that's fair to at least derive that, right? Mark. Mark. Are, are, you, Mark, are you aware that, that, that I mean, some people would make that supposition, but the fact of the matter is, is that I'm really not going to be going into what any of the facts are. It would just be inappropriate. Self-defense uh, can take a, a number of features. Somebody can actually see something, somebody can perceive something, somebody can be in reasonable fear, somebody, you know, there's a whole a, a lot of interpretation that could be attached to it. But I will tell you that legally self-defense um, uh, is uh, completely viable under the law and under the facts that I understand them to be, yes, this is self-defense. Are you but, but, there but any physical evidence or electronic evidence that supports that self-defense based on what you learned so far? Well, we, I know law enforcement has this investigation going on. We've already have our investigator working on this, and we are attempting to find out as much as we can. Um, we hope that there is some. Um, that's all the more corroboration. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that, as I understand it right now, that we have not heard of any witnesses coming forward that have actually seen anything. But that doesn't mean that there's not any or that they won't come forward later. If there are, we hope that they do. Um, we want any potential witnesses to come forward because, as we understand it, um, the truth will set him free. Uh, and you did see that he walked out freely today. And so the fact of the matter is, is that doesn't mean their investigation is completed, far from it. But you did see the fact that um, he has made an initial statement and he is out today. Uh, law enforcement has been the epitome of professionalism. And if they believe that anything more should occur, they'll do it. But we think it's important that they conduct their investigation unobstructed and so that there's no rumors controlling this. Because as everybody knows, and the reason you all are here, is that George Zimmerman has become a public person. And anything that he does that has to do with law enforcement um, is, is a national story. And so rather than allowing the rumor mills to control this case, we think it's best to let the facts control this case and to let this very fine department conduct its investigation. And then I think we'll have more that's going to be unfolding very soon. What, what, the the have a license what type of gun was he using? Uh, I won't get into the, to the type of gun because some of that could be uh, part of evidence, but yes, he does have a, a concealed weapons permit, which means that he's been a law-abiding citizen that allows him to get one. Do you think George Zimmerman committed any crime and should he be arrested? Can you repeat that, please? Do you think George Zimmerman committed any crime today and should he be arrested? Um, I'm going to allow law enforcement to make that determination. I think, though, that the challenge you have in many cases, although one person's testimony against another is enough to cause arrest, 
it's very difficult many times to um, get a conviction based on that. And I think that uh, if my client was acting in self-defense, then I know that he did not break the law from all that I'm able to ascertain. Uh, it's not my job to get into whether uh, Mr. Zimmerman broke the law or not. That would be up to law enforcement to evaluate that. And again, that's one another reason we don't want to get into uh, into their business, let them conduct their investigation. My investigator is, uh, is on this case right now, um, going through the area, evaluating things, looking for whatever witnesses we can have, we can find, looking for whatever verification and corroboration we can get to show that, in fact, this was self-defense. Even but, though your client, even though you're saying your client didn't break the law, do you think he may be charged? Well, I think that's what law enforcement has to, they have to, one, determine whether there's enough probable cause to arrest them, and then if, in fact, anybody deems that there's enough probable cause, and respectfully, I, from what I know right now, I think that would be a challenge, but all the evidence isn't in, and I don't know all the evidence. They're not duty-bound to tell me at this juncture, and I, and I respect the system, and, you know, so I don't know all that they have right now. But all that we have, it does not appear that there's probable cause today. And it doesn't appear that if there was an arrest, that there'd be enough probable cause to bring charges. And then if there were charges, can they prove this beyond a reasonable doubt? I think no. So, but again, this case is at its infancy. There's a lot more work to be done. But from the information, we've, we've worked very hard and very fast on this. It does not appear that there are, are grounds for him to be arrested, convicted, or otherwise. And it does appear, by all indications, that he acted in self-defense, as his previous statement stated. I can't get into any of the details how we come to that conclusion. As soon as this hit the news today, a lot of people said, oh, here we go again, George Zimmerman. Do you have anything to say about this, what appears to be a repeated pattern of him running into trouble? Um, I think that <laughs> uh, discretion is the better part of valor um, in what I'm going to say and in anybody else's actions. And, and I think that... You know, it's, it's very easy when you're a public person to be under the spotlight. And if, in fact, you have the, the attention that this case has, I think that if, I, if, if a client were mine that were, was in trouble and they had a high profile, I would tell them typically just to go underground and to lay low and to let the stories go away rather than creating new ones. But uh, I'm not his lawyer, and uh, he has to make his own decisions. Mr. Zimmerman's lawyer just told me that his client had the right to stand his ground and chose not to fire back. Um, did your client, you're saying his self-defense, was he was he utilizing his rights to stand his ground? Mark, um, can you come closer to the microphone? Sure. Um, and thank you for lowering this for me, everybody. That's very nice of you. Um, whether it was a joke or intentional, I, I thank you. Um, I, he, I think, from what I understand right now, this is a, this is a self-defense case, and people often confuse stand your ground, self-defense. What is it? How do they interact each with the other? The fact of the matter is, is that, from all that I understand, this is a good old-fashioned self-defense case where um, somebody has claimed that their behavior uh, was, they, they, their behavior um, was caused because they. Uh, acted in self-defense and all the legal grounds that attach to that. Can you give us a little idea of who your client is outside of this incident, what he does around here, what he does in the community, what he might do? Yeah, he, he works, in, he a, works in a family business. Um, this, this behavior, he's got a license, a, a legal license to carry a concealed firearm. Um, he, his mother, he's been working there since he's been eight years old. Uh, he's got a long-term marriage with his, with his wife. He met both his mother and his wife comes from a solid family, uh, lives in Seminole County, and has been basically, you know, no violent incidents in, in his career, in his life, um, uh, uh, that I'm aware of as far as legally. And um, this is a situation where um, it's not somebody who's continued to act in such a way that he should be arrested or that he's initiating a violent encounter. Uh, so I think when you look at that, and you juxtapose that against the situation that he finds himself in, why would he, with no history in this regard, for, pull out a gun? Why would he not only pull out the gun but then shoot when his history does not bespeak somebody acting in such a way? So just ask yourselves that. So it, it all the more goes to the power of the issue that this was a self-defense case, that this is a self-defense case. Mark, there is a history here with that, too. It goes back beyond this incident. What's at the heart of this dispute between George and your 
with what? Well, you're presuming that there's a dispute. Um, a dispute requires two, a, a, a dispute re suggests that there's two people uh, arguing each with the other. The fact of the matter is, is that you know the uh, the encounters that occurred previously are a matter of public record, and my client was the one who initiated the calls to the police on those two prior actions, or those two prior situations. So. Um, he is not looking for trouble. He did not want trouble. He's not uh, following George Zimmerman around. He is not wanting anything to do with George Zimmerman as it relates to any of this. You know, this, these other incidents were reported in September of last year. So we've gone all these many months and there's been no issue. So it's not like there's this ongoing issue. But again, I think when the facts come out, one will see how those came to be uh, interconnected or interrelated. But there is no ongoing, to my knowledge, no ongoing dispute. Uh, well, there's definitely not one as it relates to Mr. Apperson against Mr. Zimmerman. He, he's a, basically a non-entity. And in fact, when he could have brought charges or uh, when he was asked to bring charges back in September, he opted not to. He just wanted it as a matter of record so that there would be a record that incidents happened. And that's what he did. He didn't want, he didn't want the fanfare. He didn't want the attention. He didn't want anything. He just wanted to make a report, have that report on file so that Maybe if a day like this came on, then it would be there. But, the but, to, but, to, but to characterize this as an ongoing when somebody is just simply acting appropriately and allowing a, a, a record to be made for something that happened, I think to say otherwise would be a mischaracterization. I think that because he wanted something as a matter of record in case there was a subsequent incident, um, which seemingly there is now, uh, then it was a matter of record that he has it on record that would happen. And in all those instances, those two prior instances in September, he simply maintained that he was, the, that Mr. Zimmerman was the aggressor against him. Why do you call the police if you're the aggressor? And I'll point out to you that um, within minutes of this happening, he got to the first available phone. He did have, not have a cell phone on him, he being um, Mr. Apperson today, and then used a stranger's phone to immediately call law enforcement. That is not a suggestion of guilt. But he didn't say, hey, call 911, I've been threatened and I shot George Zimmerman. He just said, I shot George Zimmerman. Did he feel threatened today, or is this he feels threatened because of those two prior incidents? Um, no, there was a threat today that he perceived, and that's how, that's how he reacted. It was a deadly force threat. Well, I think any time that there's a, a gun in play, it's deadly force. So but an, automo and an automobile is also a, a, a deadly weapon under Florida law. So there could be a lot of things, and again, I won't get into the details as to what happened. I think that's up to law enforcement or up to me to, at a later day when I've conducted a proper investigation and not speculate. I, I, you know, you, you're not going to draw it out that what the facts are because it would be inappropriate. I will tell you that it's, it's self-defense, um, and I will tell you that he went ahead and identified two prior incidents and so that a record would be established, and then what happened today he was legally justified to do. Mark, is he reconsidering filing charges for the previous September case now? I, I, we had no discussion about that. It would, I, I would doubt it. I mean, I don't know. There's been no talk about it. Mark, the two, the two prior, one was, was in the car where he said that Zellner had threatened to kill him in a road rage. And then the second one was? It was a follow-up of that. It was about two weeks later. In a car as well? There was a, a car in, in, a, in a complex in Seminole County, in a business complex. But it was an extension of that, and, and again, it was just a matter of calling law enforcement to say that something happened, and he, and he wanted to make sure that it was a matter of record that he um, that there was this encounter of sorts. How does your client know George? Um, same way you do. So watching they, watching they TV. Have no watching TV. These no, just watching TV. Didn't know him, and, and you're presuming he knows him. He doesn't know him. He does not know him. They do not have a relationship. When did your client get his concealed carry permit? Was it after these I last think he's, incidents? I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, I think he's had it for 10 or 11 years. I, I don't, uh, I think it's 10 or 11 years. We did talk about it. I, I don't want to misrepresent, but I think it's been a good 10 or 11 years. Well, you said he doesn't know him outside of his incidents? No. I'm sorry? You said outside of his incidents, he doesn't know him? Correct. Other, other than from, from, like everybody else does, from watching you know, the, the TV or reading the papers. So they have a mutual acquaintance? Even though they don't know each other, they both know the same person? Uh, maybe there's some degrees of separation. I, if, if, there is, if there are, I'm not aware. Has there been any communication between the 
September, you know, since September to today? Not to my knowledge. Thank you all. Thank you. Mark, thank you. Mark, thank you. Knee jam. Yeah, knee jam. And the J is capitalized. And I don't dye my hair. never said I This car gets knocked off for the third time. Hey, Sam. I'm not going to knock any more down. I will. I know it. Ah.